What's up, guys? <laughs> nice, that looks good. And welcome to our home. It's Dr. Creatio and Dr. Rochelle, and we're doing the show. We're bringing it back. We are. Where we are going to review our week and talk about the things that we found helpful, useful, and we can share them with you, and hopefully you'll find them helpful and useful too. But before we get started, I have to show you Rochelle's stress. She told me not to uncover it, but there it is. <laughs> That's our dirty little secret. The whopping toy box in our neat house that we work that Rochelle works hard to keep clean. So that's her stress. This. So this week we're talking about Montessori, uh, these guys, which are delicious. Chocolate, dark chocolate, almond butter, peanut butter cups. Mm -hmm. uh, gratitude, because I had something crazy happen to me this weekend. What did you want to talk about? Um, a really week. cool place called Clover Mead that I took the kids to this week. Yeah, so we want to start with? Um, let's start with Montessori. Great. So a lot of you are asking, and, and we've been talking, right? It's time for Ari to go to kindergarten. JK. Yeah. JK, right? And we're putting him in Montessori. Yes. And everyone wants to know, you know, what the difference is between traditional um, education and Montessori. And the only reason that we're doing this is based on like our kid's nature and like what he's going to be into and how he is. He already hates authority yes. and he hates school <laughs> yeah. already. Mm -hmm. So we have to put him in an environment where it's the education is geared more towards his pace versus a syllabus education, which is the biggest difference. I don't have any problems with our education. Well, actually that's not true. I have lots of problems with our education system, but the way that it's taught, I don't find anything wrong with it. We're just trying to fit our child into the best place possible. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are like, well, I could never do something like that, but there's so many books and resources available that, I mean, we have some of the books, so if you need to borrow them, just ask us and you can borrow ours. You can start doing the Montessori method at home mm -hmm. with your kids. Yep, there's a lot of little things that you can introduce into your kids' bedrooms, um, just how you involve your kids in the cooking process, a lot of little tools and trips, tips that you can do on your own at home. Trips. 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 And I know for us, it was a big conversation because it's a big uh, investment into Ari's education. Yeah. And that was something that we really struggled with a lot because, you know, is this the best choice for him? But like we said, based on his personality, we know that this is what's best for him right now. And we figured, let's invest in his education right now. And uh, maybe he can you know, get his own job and invest in his own education later on for university, if that's something he wants to do. Yeah, so for us, I, I don't think we've ever really talked about this. I, I'm okay with them not going to university. And I actually don't, I, I don't think it's that great of an investment necessarily. If he wants to do it, he can. But I would rather invest in this part of his education versus like... Yes. Something later. I agree. Oh, good. We're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> good? Yep. Yeah. Moving on? Moving on. Okay, so earlier, or actually last week, um, it was on Monday. The holiday. On holiday, holiday Monday, Rochelle made fish. She made mahi mahi. Everyone wants to know what kind of fish it was. I know. It was, it was mahi mahi. Mahi mahi, which yeah. I've eaten a million times before. And I remember after thinking, you know, um, I, have a, I have a bone stuck in my throat. And you're like, that's kind of weird. I've never had a bone stuck. And I went downstairs to go do a little bit of work and I came upstairs and you were like, are you okay? Like I was bloodshot, uh, my throat was closing and my heart was racing and the best is I was like, I'm fine. And I said, I think we need to go to the hospital right now. And my biggest question was, do I call the ambulance or do I throw Croatia in the car and drive there as fast as I can? So was it really that bad? I was worried. <laughs> you said you feel like you're going to pass out and I'm thinking to myself, what if you do pass out? I don't really know what to do. So yeah, the biggest question was, Am I driving you or am I calling an ambulance? So it was close. Yeah. Like, I just so you know, like now I yeah. can say because it it's over, but it was close in terms of like passing out. Like when we were sitting there in a merge waiting to, waiting to get in, it was really close. Great. So I almost ended up having anaphylaxis. And as soon as they gave me the Benadryl, everything was, was great. I was just drowsy, but everything worked out fine. And the biggest takeaway for me anyways was, was when we were walking out and everybody was still in there very sick and broken and dying. And I was just very grateful um, that I have my health. And it's just interesting how, like there was worries on Monday. You know, there was bills and there was financial concerns and then we were talking about Montessori and all the meal prep had to be done. And it's just interesting how all that goes away when like your health is in question. Yeah, I agree. Like you just drop everything and you're like, forget it. Yep. I became really grateful that you know, things can happen so quickly and things can change so quickly. So I just became very grateful uh, in that moment. And I still am because of that. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like, everyone's grateful in that moment. But I'm yeah. more interested in, like, what happens next Wednesday <laughs> when you're back to, like, the normal grind, you know, the grind, and somebody cuts you off in traffic. Mm -hmm. 
and now you're like you're pissed off again because somebody cut you off yeah. in traffic. I totally agree. So just learning, I guess, to have moments of gratefulness every single day it just helps build that muscle. Yeah, your I, gratefulness muscle because it doesn't come so naturally to everybody. Myself included. It is work. So. Are you naturally grateful? I I go through moments like I have times in my life where I feel much more grateful, and then I have times where I get I think a little bit bitter and, and pissed off. And so I think those times passion, are less and less, passion, yeah. or that. <laughs> is it, uh, like, do you work on it? Sometimes, yeah. Like, when I find I'm in those moments of feeling a little bit more bitter, I, I practice, I include that in my morning my morning routine, even if it's just a couple minutes a day. What makes you bitter? There's some things. I don't, maybe that's for another show. <laughs> slow coffee filters? <laughs> yeah, slow coffee filters. You know, we'll talk about that another time. Talk about these. Okay, I found these at Costco this week. Um, they are almond butter cups with dark chocolate, and my kids so are free to Forget your are, kids. I'm and and me, them. I like to buy things I like too. Um, but yeah, you know how when you go to Costco, there's things there that aren't always there. So I just wanted to show you guys. I found these this week, so I picked them up. Krisha's already ate half the bag, so. I've eaten four. Yeah. This one half the bag. That's off track day. And the last one? So I don't know about you guys, but. Summertime. Summertime means the kids are home all day, which I love being at home with the boys. Uh, it's great, but it's really tiring at the end of the day because they're active. They always want to be doing stuff. I mean, we're playing helicopters from six in the morning till no, it's Nerf, War, Nerf, War. Nerf War or like chasing clowns or something crazy. Clowns attack the city. Yes. <laughs> so I'm always looking for things to do with the boys that are active that gets us outside and, you know, it takes up some, you know, portion of the day. So we have something to do. So I took them to Clover Mead this past week which is in Elmer to bee farm it was so great we spent almost seven hours there they had zip lines and they had little uh, beehives and you could watch how they build the honey and just little activities uh, for the kids it was just so great old tractors and just a bunch of climbing stuff we had such a great time there and the owners were amazing they really welcomed us there there was a tractor ride they shared the history uh, I just can't say enough good things about that place. If you get a chance to take the kids there, I highly recommend that this summer. And this is what we've been listening to all week as we close on this. Alexa, play Ghostbusters by Ray Parker Jr. <laughs> Ghostbusters, from Ghostbusters by Ray Parker Jr. Every single morning like this. And then we have to dance, because if we don't have a dance party, it's game over. So we'll leave you with that. Have a great weekend as we're kicking it in, and we'll talk to you next time.